Hello, it's the Invisible Teacher here. Welcome, class. I'm very distraught and saddened today because a friend of mine has committed suicide. Hello, it's my the Invisible Teacher. My very good friend, uh, Welcome, Daphne class. Davenport, who I I'm love. I'm very distraught and saddened um, today because uh, a friend yes, of mine um, has committed suicide. I wouldn't suicide. recommend that any of you do My that. My very good friend, and uh, I'm very Daphne saddened Davenport, that the times who I love. have seemed so difficult um, at the um, moment. Yes, um, that it I should wouldn't have led recommend to that any of anyone you do that. Taking their and own I'm lives, very especially a friend, times and have seemed a friend so who brought so much joy and grace and spirit and enthusiasm to my life and to lives, that of many other people. A friend and um, a friend who I brought so want much joy to discuss and in, grace in the future and more about Swinburne. To my um, life my friend Daphne many other loved people. the pre-Raphaelite artists um, and I poets. Want to um, discuss in, she was in very the future interested in more poetry about as well as art. Um, my um, friend she Daphne particularly loved admired the John Waterhouse paintings and poets. He seems when I um, studied she history was very of art at the University as well as of art. Aberdeen. He seemed um, to be left out of the pre-Raphaelite um, paintings. paintings that we discussed he there. He seems, when I um, studied History of Art now, at the University of Aberdeen, he I seemed to be left out of the pre Partly in memory of my beautiful um, friend, painters that we discussed there. Daphne, um, want to read now, to the first to part of a poem called I just want Partly which I have in the volume that Ken Spen Spellman's bookshop Daphne in York kindly supplied me with for a nominal fee. The first part of a poem called Astrophel, um, which I have in the uh, volume that Ken Spellman's bookshop in York kindly supplied me with. We will go on to discuss Spellman's Astrophel as a whole York poem later on, me with but for now, for a these nominal lines. Fee. Astrophel. Um, after reading Sir uh, Philip Sidney's Arcadia go on to in the garden Astrophel of an old English manor house. Later on, but for now, one, these lines, a star in the silence After that follows Sir Philip the song Arcadia of the death of the sun, the garden speaks of an old music English in manor heaven, house. and the hollows one, and heights of the world are a star as one. In the silence that one lie that outsings and outlightens the rapture of music in and heaven, thrills and the hollows mute night and the heights the sense of, of it the world brightens are as the soul one. that it fills. One lie that outsings and outlightens the rapture of sunset and thrills. The flowers of the sun that is sunken mute night till hang the sense heavy of, of heart as of head. The soul the that bees that have eaten and drunken, the soul of their sweetness of fled. The flowers of the sun, but a that sunflower is sunken, of song, hang on heavy of heart My as spirit has fed as a bee. The bees that have eaten and drunken, make sunnier than morning was sunny. The soul of their sweetness the of fled for me. But a sunflower of song, and lines on, the on whose honey that my spirit has my fed eyes as a bee. And flowers Makes sunnier than morning the shadows was sunny, of ages, the twilight that sunder me. their season and ours. The letters and lines as on the, the pages ghosts of the centuries that, that sever, my eyes a and season of colourless time, wax faint as from the shadows days whose of remembrance ages, is ever that sunder their as they season were and ours. Sublime as the ghosts of the centuries the that season, sever, the bread and a the season of colourless the time, soul that I from days whose with remembrance yet. is ever. Had it has only really withered and perished sublime. to rise not again as, as the it season, set. The bread and Shame the were it that the Englishmen that living should read as their forefathers read it the books of the perished praise and thanksgiving not of Englishmen dead. As it O oh, light of the land that, that Englishmen living and kindle thy soul with her bread. The books whose of life, the praise and such as fate would have thought for thee, dead. was lovelier than oh, all but of thy the land death. That adored thee, By and what name thy soul could lovers but breath, know it? Might whose love life, of thee hail such as thee fate after, would have thought for thee, was lovelier than all but thy death. Poet, 
by whose what love was name thy star? Could lovers but know it? A star Might in the moon of down of Maytime. The after. A star in the cloudland of change. Cities. Astrophile, too splendid and poet, sad for the day whose love was thy to star cheer or eclipse or a, a star in the moon down of maytime a star in the cloudland of too change, sweet for tradition too of splendid vision, and sad to see for the but through shadows of to tears cheer or eclipse rise or deathless a across the division of measureless years too sweet the for twilight may of deepen vision, and harden to see as but night through shadows with the stream of, tears, of it runs rise till starshine transfigure a garden of measureless whose radiance years. responds to the suns the twilight may the deepen light and of harden the love of the as darkens, night with the stream of it the runs light that rise till starshine that transfigure a garden the love that forgets whose radiance not hearkens, responds to the if suns England forgets. the light of the love of the dark the lights that arise and that Hello, set. It's the invisible the love here. that forgets the Welcome not hearkens if England forgets. I'm forget. very distraught and saddened today because a friend of mine has committed suicide. My very good I'm friend, still uh, my friend Daphne, Daphne Davenport, is not dead, really. who I loved. I find it. Difficult um, to believe. Uh, yes, that she um, I wouldn't recommend be. that any of you do um, that. I'm hoping and that her I'm spirit. I'm very saddened well, I'm that the times she certainly have will seemed live in my so memories for difficult years at the years moment. And years. That it should have and led to because I was anyone about her, taking have their been own lives, about her, especially a friend. And didn't and get in touch with a her when I should have done. Brought so perhaps. much joy and grace and spirit you, and enthusiasm to my life and to m that of many other people. Um, I want to discuss in, in the future more about Swinburne. Um, my friend Daphne loved the pre-Raphaelite artists and poets. Um, she was very interested in poetry as well as art. Um, she w particularly admired John Waterhouse paintings. He seems, when I studied history of art at the University of Aberdeen, he seemed to be left out of the pre-Raphaelite um, painters that we discussed there. Um, now, to return to Swinburne, I just want, partly in memory of my beautiful friend, Daphne, want to read the first part of a poem called Astrophel, which I have in the volume that Ken Spen Spellman's bookshop in York kindly supplied me with for a nominal fee. Um, uh, we will go on to discuss Astrophel as a whole poem later on. But for now, these lines. Astrophel. After reading Sir Philip Sidney's Arcadia in the garden of an old English manor house. One. A star in the silence that follows the song of the death of the sun speaks music in heaven and the hollows and heights of the world are as one, one lyre that outsings and outlightens the rapture of sunset and thrills, mute night till the sense of it brightens the soul that it fills. The flowers of the sun that is sunken hang heavy of heart as of head, the bees that have eaten and drunken the soul of their sweetness have fled. But a sunflower of song, on whose honey my spirit has fed as a bee, makes sunnier than morning was sunny, the twilight for me. The letters and lines on the pages that sundered my eyes and the flowers wax faint as the shadows of ages that sunder their season and ours. As the ghosts of the centuries that sever 
a season of colourless time, from days whose remembrance is ever, as they were, sublime. The season that bred and that cherished, the soul that I commune with yet, had it utterly withered and perished, to rise not again as, as it set. Shame were it that Englishmen living should read as their forefathers read the books of the praise and thanksgiving of Englishmen dead. O light of the land that adored thee, and kindled thy soul with her breath, whose life, such as fate would afford thee, was lovelier than aught but thy death. By what name could lovers but know it, might love of thee hail thee after? Felicides, Astrophel, poet, whose love was thy star? A star in the moon down of Maytime, a star in the cloudland of change, too splendid and sad for the daytime, to cheer or eclipse or estrange. Too sweet for tradition or vision, to see but through shadows of tears, rise deathless across the division of measureless years. The twilight may deepen and harden, as nightward the stream of it runs, till starshine transfigure a garden, whose radiance responds to the sun's. The light of the love of thee darkens, the light that arise and that set, the love that forgets thee not hearkens, if England forgets.